Hi everyone! So I'm doing our very first question of the week. Uh, today is Friday, November 16th. And I actually chose a question um, by a woman named Teresa A. I'm just going to read it to you from Facebook. It says, My daughter passed away in July of 2011. I've not had any dreams of her. Other parents who've lost kids seem to have had one dream of them on the other side. Can you tell me why this might be? And actually, um, that's, that's something I hear commonly, Teresa, um, you know, from parents. They'll say, you know, I, I keep asking for dreams. I keep praying and saying, come visit me in a dream, and, and they don't do it. So there's a couple things that I can say that I know for sure can interfere in your ability to connect with a loved one who's died um, and who's now living in the afterlife experience um, and, and you're left behind and we have this vibrational discrepancy between the two. So the first one that I've seen or the first reason I've seen that interferes with your ability to connect with the other side is the low frequency from grief. So if we have a someone's passing and we haven't worked through that passing, meaning we haven't come to peace with it, it doesn't mean that you have to like that this has happened. It doesn't mean that you can't feel grief about it. But a lot of times um, when I'll see people have the most resistance, there's, there might be some anger about the passing, um, the f a feeling of being unfair. Um, and those those kind of energies or feeling hopelessness about it, those energies are very low frequency energies. When we look at vibrationally on the scale, we start all the way down here with despair and we go up to ecstasy or joy and gratitude, these being really high frequencies. Well, when you die, what happens is you exist in a higher frequency. Um, you know, you're vibrating faster, and so those higher frequency emotions are what you feel. So you feel joy, you feel ecstasy, you feel peace, you feel gratitude. And if a person's all the way down here into anger, um, you know, despair, hopelessness energy, um, in order for our loved ones to make a connection with us, what has to happen is we have to meet them halfway. So we at least have to be in a place of acceptance, um, acceptance, I would say, you don't really have to be at a place of total peace about it, but there has to be this middle ground of it. at least I accept it, I know that there's a divine plan at work here, um, and that's a middle ground that your loved one can meet you at frequency wise. So I hope I'm explaining this well enough for you. But so what I recommend for that in particular is to actually do process work of moving through the, the grief process and accepting the passing, letting go of anger, doing forgiveness work. That kind of thing can um, assist you in opening up your consciousness to being able to make a connection in the dream state. The best thing I can actually recommend, and I think the reason people like the dream state is because they think they don't have any control, and so, you know, if a loved one visits them in a, a dream state, it's real. And it is real, but you can have a real experience of your daughter or your loved one in your conscious daytime hours. Um, and... I actually recommend that this is what people work towards, is being able to make a conscious connection during the day to the person that you love. And, and the way that you can do this in the beginning is you, you take a photograph of the person and you just sit down and you close your eyes and you invite that person to be present with you. And then in your mind's eye, you imagine a place that the two of you loved to go together. And you just recreate that scene in your mind as best you can, all the sights, smells, um, the way it felt to be there, bring all of your senses into the experience, and then invite that person to be present. And you have to use your imagination. And what people don't realize is that the imagination is the doorway to the soul. It is how we connect with the other side. When I first started doing the work that I do, I thought it was my imagination because it's exactly like that. And then as I started to get validation and the information started to really come in and I knew I wasn't making it up, I really learned how to trust it and surrender to it. So in the beginning, when you do conscious connection with your loved one, it's going to feel like you're making it up. 
I can tell you that the moment you'll know you're not, or the moment that I can validate for you that you're not, is when you have an emotional reaction. Um, I tell people this all the time. When your loved ones come into your energy field, they come in through the heart chakra. So you feel them emotionally. It's what makes the difference between just thinking about them and having a flashback of a memory and not feeling any emotion and those moments where all of a sudden you're thinking about them and the tears flood up and um, you get tingles and you feel all this emotion. Those are moments when your loved one is standing right there in your energy field, right there in your aura, touching you and connecting with you. So you grab a photograph, you imagine a place that you love to go to together, you see that person in your mind's eye and you sit down with them somewhere in this beautiful scene and you just talk to them. You talk to them in your head, they're going to hear everything you're saying and this is where you have to put your faith in that person's love for you. You have to trust that they're going to consciously be there with you as well, that you're both making a conscious connection. So if you'd like, you can set it up like a date. Um, um, just kind of call out and say a prayer the night before and say tomorrow morning I'm going to sit down and I'm going to connect with you. I'd love for you to be there and they will and I promise you They're not too busy for you. They're not got tons of stuff going on that they can't take the time to be with you They will be there. So your job is to put faith in it and to trust it and um, Enjoy it the last thing you can do if grief and low frequency is your issue is you can start to comfort the part of you that's grieving um, or that might be afraid of seeing your loved one in a dream by saying every single night right before you fall asleep just saying a prayer and saying to yourself you can do this in your head or you can do it out loud I'm open to connecting with so and so tonight and during my sleep I am open to connecting to so and so tonight during my sleep and just list whoever you want to connect with and I allow myself to remember it in the morning. It's that simple. I'm open to connecting with my daughter tonight while I sleep. And I am allowing myself to remember it in the morning. So that's one way that you, we can interfere, which is the low frequency, and one way to alleviate that. The second issue that I see with someone not being able to dream about their loved ones is really their decreased ability to retain their dreams in the first place. Um, we, if we don't pay attention to our dreams, we lose the ability to recall and remember what happens in our dreams. And this is a really simple solution. This is a simple fix. So if you're somebody who doesn't dream and it's not related to medication of some kind, uh, what you need to do is either start keeping a dream, dream journal and writing down your dreams in the morning, even little tiny bits that you can remember, or what I like to do is when I start to wake up in the morning and I, my consciousness starts to come out of sleep, I will not open my eyes. I will sit down and I will review the dreams that I had during the night. I will literally ask myself questions about what was that trying to tell me? What was that guidance was that giving me? And by doing that, my mind has now been trained to pay very close and particular attention to the dreams that I have. So it will make it a lot easier for your loved ones to get through to you if you have that facility developed in your mind. So I hope that answers your questions, and I hope you have success with connecting with your loved ones during a dream. And most of all, I hope you try out the conscious connection during the daytime. So God bless, and have a great weekend.